We will now be starting our Microsoft sponsored segment of the stream. We're going to be making a weather bot. So we're going to be using something called Composer, which is part of Microsoft Azure. We're going to do something a little, a little bit fun with it. We're going to make it human. We don't want a bot saying, good morning, what would you like to do? We want a bot that's like, hey, what's going on? So let's start by opening up command prompt. We need to get git and install it. I've already done that. We need node.js and we need yarn and we need .NET. We'll also need to get composer, which is a download link there and the emulator for the composer, which is a link there. And finally, we want to get open weather, which we'll be connecting to, to get our weather. And if you make an account, you'll need to confirm the account. And then shortly after your keys will be valid and able to be used in what we're about to do. I'm going to go to the drive that I've put this on. It's in, I put it in folder bots and then we're going to navigate to bot framework dash composer. Then we're going to go to the folder composer and here we're going to put in yarn start all and we're going to let that start up great now it's running so now we can open up our local host 3000 and we get to this page here so far so good so here when we click on new we create bot from scratch then we're going to name it we want to make this like our friend it's not just going to be a regular bot it's going to be weather bot friend weather bot will be our friend but also tell us the weather and that will be created in the location that you've set this all up in so here's our blank bot so when we first start this up it will give a standard greeting why don't i show you guys what that looks like so start bot and once this reloads we will open it up in the emulator so welcome to empty bot sample. It's not really friendly yet, is it? We're gonna go over to our sender response here. This is our standard response, but our bot's gonna be a little friendlier. It's gonna be like, hey, what's up? This is just our starting dialogue. We have to put in the command weather before it knows that we wanna find the weather. So we're going to add in a new dialogue here. We're gonna call it get weather. Now we have this new dialogue here. The first thing we're gonna do is add a send response that will say, let's check it out. Okay. And over here, I should actually put in the very beginning. There it is. Say, so type weather to get the weather. There we go. Now we have our instructions. Then we have our begin dialogues. This is what will happen once we've typed weather in. But we'll need to make a trigger for it first. The first thing we need to do is go back to our weather bot and make sure it's a regular expression recognizer type. Okay, now we can add a new trigger on weather bot friend. And we're gonna keep it intent recognized and it's going to be weather and here will be weather as well. There we go, now we can submit it. Great. We will create from here a new dialogue. So dialogue management begin dialogue. Okay. And from the dialogue name, we're going to link it to get weather. We're going to put in, uh, I think that's it actually. I think this will begin, this will call the get weather here that will say, let's check it out. So let's double check. We'll restart the bot, test an emulator. And so now, so type weather to get the weather. Let's try it. And now it says, let's check it out. Great, and so far, so good. Now we need to actually get the weather. We're going to go over to our get weather panel, begin dialog, and we're going to add ask a question text. Here's what the bot's going to ask us. So it can say something like, what's your zip code? And then we can put in our property here, which is going to be user.zip code and the output format we want to make sure we trim it. So we're just going to go trim uh, this dot value. That will get rid of any spaces we have um, if some of the user puts in spaces. So this is our user input. This is what we're putting in our zip code property and we're trimming it. 
Now the other here is what happens if the, it's not recognized. So it can say something like, I don't understand, or I don't, I don't understand. Uh, try the format one, two, three, four, five. This is what it will say if it doesn't recognize it. And we're going to set up rules, which is going to be that the length of this dot value must equal five. If it doesn't, we can just say something like error. This will be similar. Let's put in the same thing as this. Let's put in the same thing here. And we're going to put in a default, which will just be one, two, three, four, five, if they uh, max out the number of inputs. Now, we're going to add an HTTP request. And that's going to be right here. We can go to access external resource, send an HTTP request. It's gonna be of type get. And the URL that we're getting is going to be from open weather. We're gonna get this URL right here. So I'm gonna copy and paste that over here to our URL. Except here it says your API token. I'm going to get my token. Actually, I can show you and then just delete it after. Click on it, my API keys. So I can copy this, copy, and I'm gonna put that over here where it says your API token. So we put that key here, paste it in, put in properties. We wanna make sure that it's going to be, the result property is dialog.api response, and we want it to be of type JSON. Great. We need to put in a condition to make sure uh, we know whether or not it actually is able to get the thing we're looking for. So let's put in a create condition, branch if else, and on true, we want to put set property, that's right, manage properties, set property, and this is going to be our dialog.weather, and the value is going to equal dialog.api response.content. I forgot to put in the condition. So the condition here is that it's successful. So dialog.api, whoops, api underscore response, the status code equals 200. So this is what we're going to find out. Dialog.api response status code equals 200. If so, then we're good. And we can get the, set the property here. Then we need to let the user know what the result was so we'll put in send a response and we're going to fill that in with the weather is uh, we're going to put in dialog.weather.weather and the temperature is dialog.weather.temp and then we're going to put and degrees semicolon and this will give us the weather as a message we're also gonna put in a false condition if we get an error. We're going to send a response and say, we have a problem. And then we're gonna let the user know what it was, which is dialog.api underscore response dot content dot message. So that will say what the error was. And after that, we're going to delete the input of the zip code so that we don't save something that didn't work. Because once we save it, then what, next time the user asks for the weather, we'll just give it to them. We want to put in manage properties, delete a property, and it will be uh, user.zip code. That's an expression, user.zip code. I think that's it. Let's give that a try, make sure we got everything. Let's start the bot again. And it says sub, type weather to get the weather. Let's do that. What's your zip code, bud? 90210. Oh look, the weather is haze and the temperature is 70 degrees. So that's a little preview, a little explanation of setting up your bot framework composer. Um, there's lots of cool stuff you can do within this. As you can see, there's this nice user experience. You can just select things. You can see what things are available and it kind of walks you through it. And you can customize things how you like, as we did in this example. That's it guys. Thank you very much to Microsoft Azure for sponsoring today's stream and I hope you guys all enjoy the weather bot.